Okay, here we are. Right, we're going to have a look at Apache Kafka. That's Apache Kafka with Apache Zookeeper and running on Ubuntu Virtual Machine. So we're going to go off and use Firefox or something suitable off to the internet and download some stuff in a moment. Just want to make sure that the environment that we're actually in is, is suitable. So what we're going to do is um, always put sudo in in front uh, and we're going to have a look for uh, it's it's the thing I'm looking for here is the Java environment. So let's have a look and see Java eight or nine. Yep, we've got that, that's already there, so that's fine. If it wasn't, then what I would be doing is installing that uh, and making sure I've got the right one that I need. Say so eight Java runtime environment, and away we go. And that would install. It's there, so that's fine. There's some tidying up perhaps that's required, but there we go. Um, this is the machine that I'm operating on, which is uh, which is an Ubuntu machine. So, good, set, right, let's go off to Firefox, uh, off to Apache Kafka, and to Quick Start, and to download. So I'm going to download from a, a suitable mirror, so pick up a, a mirror, I'm in the UK, so pick that one up and save that file. And there it is, it's starting to download. So I could go back a couple of clicks, maybe three, one too many. Uh, I go back into the quick start and what you could find here is a link to Zookeeper. And that's Zookeeper. If you then go into getting started, there's a whole load of stuff you can read about through the learn about and then download. Uh, through download, you've got another download and that from there we'll pick up the appropriate mirror. I pick up the stable release and currently that's 3.4.10 and we'll save that one as well. So they take a few minutes to actually download, so we'll let them do that in the background and we'll come back when that's finished. But let's just close that down out of the way and we'll come back and have a look. Okay, let's go and have a look in downloads. There they are, so let's just move those. Move or copy, take your pick. Move them up a directory. Let's move up a directory and we're back in home directory which is Ray for me. So what I'm going to do now is I need to unzip those so let's use a XZF as the option and we'll do that for Kafka first and we'll do the same for Zookeeper. Jobs are good. Right so if we go into Kafka we can see that we've got a number of directories. We've got the, if we list the binaries, we can see we've got a load of shells, uh, some scripts to go work with. So we'll see some of those in action in a moment. And if we look at config, we can see there's a whole load of properties. And we'll look at the sort of Zookeeper properties that will be used when we start up the Zookeeper, which is the sort of cluster manager, really, of the individual servers. And then we've got the server property. So we want to start up a Kafka server. Then we've got produce, which is producing messages, and we've got a consumer, which is receiving messages, consuming messages, messages based on topics. So we write to and receive from from topics. So that's going to be the sort of centre point of this as we get in to this. So the first things first, we're going to need to start. So let's just see where we are. So right, yeah, we're in the Kafka directory. That's correct. So that's good. So what we need to do is we need to, from the binaries, we need to pick up the Zookeeper and it's the Zookeeper server uh, which we're, we're starting effectively. So we need the start and the parameter, the single parameter for this, which is the configuration file that it's going to use. And of course, that's the Zookeeper properties in the config directory. Let's just broaden that out so we can see that in the full. And there it is. And then hit return. And away it goes. So we're looking for this line here which says it started on the local host and of course against port number 2181. Excellent. I'm just going to squeeze it up to the top half of the screen and I'm going to bring in a second terminal which will bring down into this space here because this is where we can start the server. So check where we are. Right, let's move into Kafka and it's executable in the in it's the binary again, so that's where we're going to we're going to start. It's it's this time around, of course, it's the Kafka server that we're looking at starting, and again, it's got a configuration file as we saw, one of those properties, which is the server properties folder file. Sorry, in that config folder. Oh look, and we can see the activity now going on. So 
all should be good. Now I need a producer, so what I've done is I've I've set up a couple of uh, putty screens. So these are actually logging into this machine, and they're currently oh, I see in the home directory. So we're going to to Kafka, just the same starting point. It does help if we, of course, uh, actually move into the right place. So let's have a look, see where we are. Right, there it is. So let's uh, let's go into that. There we are. Right, so it does help if you're in the right place, as they say. So it's into slash bin slash, uh, and this time, of course, what we're doing is we're starting the producer side of this. So again, it's against Kafka. So it's Kafka. It's the console producer. And this time what we're going to need is against that is a broker list. Now there's only one in this broker list, it's the local host, 9092 this time. Uh, I'm going to create, uh, there's a topic here, well you'll use a topic uh, for this producer and it's my first topic. You could actually create the topic separately and then, and then uh, address them here, but if it doesn't exist it will create it anyway. Uh, that looks good, let's fire that away. Yep, the greater than signs there, so that's uh, that's looking pretty reasonable. Uh, just see where we are. Okay, let's see if we can go into Kafka. Yes, we can, uh, and let's see if we can execute in the binary. Now this time it's Kafka, um, still on console, but this time we are a consumer as opposed to a producer. So we expect to see this now. Instead of having a broker list, we have a bootstrap server. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be the same beastie. Uh, and that bootstrap server is again on the local host. It's still on 9092. And the topic is the same topic. So I need a producer to produce stuff. Uh, and then I need you know one or more consumers to consume that information once it's available. So see if that works. Good, that looks quiet. Um, so it seems like everything is set up prior to that. So press return, press return, and you can see things are happening. Just start typing messages and we'll see if uh, that comes through. So it should be happening in pretty much real time. So um, of course it could be responding to alarm conditions that are are changing. So this would be producers creating that and then the consumers would obviously then uh, be taking that on board and acting upon it. So you know those applications and how they deal with this information is up to them. The job here really is a reliable delivery of this information in near real time but at the same time the ability to go back and have a look at that information as well. Right so that's local stuff going on. Right, let's try something slightly different on the consumer side. So that's what we started off with, with the bin Kafka console consumer script, and then the bootstrap server local host uh, 9092, and then the topic. And let's see what's in there in terms of, you know, what's in there in total. And let's see if we can pick up, and here we go, we can see the list now. This is all of the messages from the beginning through to the end. I put a few in a few a little bit later under sometime later uh, just to give some sort of reference. So we can start to see then the sort of build up of those messages uh, back in time. So we could come in as a later consumer and actually pick up those records from the beginning or in fact from a, a particular record number because each one will actually be uh, individually stamped with uh, an incremental number. So we can go back to that that time and then and then begin from there instead. We just happen to begin from the beginning. So uh, we've got our producer still putting out sort of alarms and the like uh, uh, as they do, and they are appearing because we started from the beginning. We continue on from that point. So it allows you to sort of roll back and 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 then sort of build the picture up based on the alarms. It also allows you to sort of have a consumer fall over, come back and then carry on from where we left off. 
So all of that is sort of covered in the sort of the initial quick start within Kafka and there's also the sort of cluster side of business as well. So well worth having a look at um, at your leisure. Bye for now.